It's day 41. Time for us to combine dictionaries and loops into one superpower. So we can use loops in lists quite easily. They let us move through all the contents of it, display it, and even be selective with what we show to our users. The problem with dictionaries is that for every row, they store two bits of data, the name of the key and the actual value of that key. So loops don't work quite the way you'd think. So here I've defined a dictionary just to hold the details of a character in a game. You'll see there I've got the keys name, health, strength, and equipped with their relevant values. This is a pretty standard loop that we might use on a list. What does it do when we feed it to a dictionary? Well, this isn't maybe what you expected. What it actually does is it gives you the key values. So if you wanted to print out the actual values, that becomes a bit more complicated. What you'd need to do is something like this. Using the square bracket syntax to say which key value you want. And in this case, the variable I to represent the name of the key. That gives us the key values, but not the key. So again, we can run back and forth with a dictionary in a loop for a long time to get what we want, but there is a better way. Here, I'm creating the variable value each time, and I'm taking it from my dictionary's dot values. This is another function that can be run on a data type. Values is going to give us the actual value of each bit of each key in the dictionary. If we run it, we'll see we're getting them. Again, though, we're still not getting the names of the key. How can we do both? The dot items function actually returns both the key name and its value. So now we can actually do stuff to both of those things. I've pulled it out here and just printed it nicely with an F string, but we can even go further than that and put Smith statements. In. in this case, I'm making a comment about the strength key that should only pop up once I've printed strength and it does. Now that I can look at both the content and the key value, I can have nested ifs that react to the key name and the value stored within it. In this example, I've put a nested if in to have an opinion about the strength of our character. If I reduce the strength now to under 100, it has a different opinion about that value because it's reading a different value. But notice it's not doing that if statement for each and every key, only the one I've specified. Now, loops and dictionaries are not as good friends as lists and dictionaries, but they do still have their uses and they do still allow you to iterate through it. There aren't many common problems with this sort of approach because really there's only one way to do it. So here's the most common problem that you face when using loops and dictionaries. In this case, I've used dot items, but only put the one variable in the for part. Let's see what happens when we run it. Well, it's given us round brackets and two items in each one. This is because what it's actually doing when it takes an item is it's splitting out each row of the dictionary. It's pulling out separately the key name and the key value. Unless we specify that we want those as two separate variables, we're not gonna have a good time in accessing anything that appears on the screen there. The important thing to do when you want both of these things is to do name and value so that you can read both. And there you go, it prints out perfectly. I've gone and broken some code for you to see if you can fix it. Try your best and see where you end up. Your challenge today actually requires a reasonable amount of thinking and a look at the code that I've placed on the screen for you now. In this example, I've created a dictionary that has a key name, but no value for it. That none, the capital N, is a specific data type that means there's nothing here at the moment. What I would like you to do 
is I would like you to define a dictionary that has keys that would store information about a website. It would store the website's name, its URL, and a brief description to say what it's about, possibly even a five-star rating. You should then use a loop to print out the names of the keys, ask the user to type in the value, and store those values inside the dictionary. Once you've done that, print out the entire thing using a loop at the end. You could use subroutines to make this a little bit easier to see if you'd like, but that's what I want you to do. When you're done, don't forget to share it with us by publishing it to the community and using the hashtag replit 100 days of code. Well, we've seen that loops and dictionaries aren't the best of friends, but tomorrow we're going to use dictionaries because we want to be the very best, like no one ever was. It's, it's a Pokemon joke. Oh, building a Pokedex. Gotta get better writers. Thank <music> you.